Father, we thank you so much for the day. We thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together again, Father, to uh, show you our love and adoration for you, Father, through our praise and worship this morning. Father, we pray that everything we do, sing, and say will be those things that are pleasing to you, that you'll be glorified because we were here. Father, just watch over us now. Be with us this morning. Fill us with your love and with your power. We pray this in your Son's name. Amen. Peace be with
for our communion meditation, I have chosen the uh, Our Daily Bread devotional. Is uh, a couple of years ago. It's called Nailed to the Cross. And I'll be reading uh, Colossians, second chapter, verses 9 through 17. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. He, in Him, you were also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature, not with circumcision done by hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ. Having been buried with Him in baptism, and raised with him through the faith and the power of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins, and in the uncircumcised decision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or what you drink, or with regard to religious festivals, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. <clears throat> it was a touching church service. Our pastor talked about Jesus taking our sins upon himself and dying in our place to take our punishment. He asked if anyone still felt guilt over confessed sin and was therefore not enjoying the forgiveness of God. We were to write the sins or sin or sins on a piece of paper, walk to the front of the church and nail the paper to the cross that was placed there. Many went forward, and you could hear the pounding of the nails for several minutes. That act didn't give us forgiveness, of course, but it was a physical reminder that Christ had already taken those sins on Himself as He hung on the cross and died. That's what the Apostle Paul taught the church in Colossae. The people who were being influenced by false teachers who presented Christ as less than adequate for their needs. But Paul explained that Jesus paid the price for our sins. He said, the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Colossians 2.14, which we read. If we confess our sins, God to God, seeking His cleansing, He will forgive. That's in 1 John, 1 chapter, verse 9. We don't need to hold on to the guilt. Our sins have been nailed to the cross. They've been taken away. Jesus has forgiven them all. Han wrote, Lord, give me courage to confess, to bear my sinful heart to Thee. Thy full forgiveness I would know, and from this weight of guilt be free. Guilt is a burden God never intended for His children to bear. As we meet around this Lord's table, let's focus on the cross what Christ did for us. The bread represented His body. 
body of flesh, the one of the Virgin Mary. He walked as a man who was tempted as a man, but yet was without sin. He was crucified on a cruel cross for our benefit to take our punishment so that we wouldn't have to be punished. I see. I see. That's what the cup represents the blood of Christ.
What have you thanked God for? We know we're thankful for those things, but have you thanked God for those? So now tell me what you've actually really, seriously, not Sunday school answer, what you thank God for in the last 24 hours? Jesus. 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 Salvation. Salvation. The day. Yeah. Um, sometimes I think what we're thankful for and what we thank God for, you look at that list for two different things. I mean, you're popping them out. Here's things we're thankful for. What did you actually thank God for? Well, yeah. And yes, God knows everything, but I think God has a desire to hear it from us. God wants us to share with Him those things we're thankful for. Prayer is an important part of our life. Prayer is a part of our life that I don't know how you get through without. Thanking God for things, asking God for things, turning things over to Him that we know we can't handle. I mean, there's just a whole list of things we do in prayer. And I think sometimes we get so busy on the wish list of prayer that we forget the most important part, thanking God. There's not a day goes by that He doesn't do something in our lives that we need to be thankful for. I mean, Stacy said the day. It, it's a good thing she said that. Because a sermon is, what if the things you had today were only the things you thank God for yesterday? What would you have today? If all you had today was what you thank God for yesterday in your prayers, what would you have today? Man, if you didn't thank God for the day, everything else doesn't make sense because you don't have a day today. How important is it that you woke up this morning? I mean, if you look at Scripture, God doesn't guarantee you a tomorrow. And so when you wake up and you put your feet on the floor, there's a praise to be had right there. When you wake up and you're able to stand up and go and do something because you have good health, there's a praise to be had there. When you walk out of your bedroom and you are able to put on some clothes, there's a praise to be had there. For some of us, a big praise. You walk downstairs or into your kitchen and you get food out of the refrigerator, there's a praise. You get to leave and go to a job, that's a praise. I mean, as you go through your day, everything we do is a praise. To be able to get up in the morning early and, and to open your Bible and read God's Word, man, that's a blessing and a praise. And we have to look at our days and have to think, look what God has done for us. There are people gang that are not going to wake up tomorrow morning. There are people that are going to wake up and have no food to eat. There are people going to wake up tomorrow morning without a roof over their head. There are people waking up every day that don't have jobs. And we complain about ours and we gripe about things. We do this, but man, praise God that you're working. Praise God that He's given you this life to live and do. And then praise Him that you were able to live it hopefully for Him. I mean, I, putting a sermon together and, and, and seeing that phrase, it made me think, what did I thank God for yesterday? I mean, if that statement was true, if all I had today was what I thanked God for yesterday... There are some days I would have nothing. I spent my whole prayer time, God, this person's sick, and this person needs this, and this person needs this, and I need this, and I'd like to have this, and we can do this, and that. We never got around to the things. And when I put this over together, I, I realized this week that I now start with the things. Start with the thanks and the praise and, and do all that so we're ready to go. And then 
God, I need to ask you for. And don't we have a lot to ask God for? How many of you find your asking God for list a lot longer than your praising God for list? Shows you how important it is to give things in priority order, isn't it? I mean, I'm going to read some scriptures to you and, and show you what the Bible has to say about God, about this thanks thing. Um, we'll start in the Old Testament. In 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles, page 571. That helps you at all. 1 Chronicles 16. And it reads as follows. Uh, we're going to start with verse 7. 1 Chronicles 16, verse 7. So that day first committed to Asaph and his associates. No, that day David first committed to Asaph and his associates this psalm of thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of his wonderful acts. Glory in His name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. Remember the wonders He has done, His miracles and His judgments He has pronounced. O descendants of Israel, His servants. O sons of Jacob, His chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers His covenant forever. And the word... The word he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac, he confirmed it to Jacob as a decree to Israel, as an everlasting covenant. I mean, start off. Thank God for everything he's done. Not just thank him for your food when you pray, just, but thank him for everything he's done. I don't know about you, but as I look back through my life, there's a lot of things He's done. I mean, we talked about it during communion. God sent His Son for me. Do you understand how personal that is? God sent His Son for you. 2,000 years ago, nailed to a cross for the sins you're committing today. We gotta thank God for that. Thank Him that He is willing to put His Son on that cross for me. Look at look what else He has done. He made, He makes the sun to rise and the sun to set and the moon to be in the sky. He, he feeds the birds. In the air. He gives us air to breathe. He gives us the waters to drink. He does everything for us. And in return to out of Scripture, what does He ask for? Those simple words. Thank you. From His creatures that He created, from us, God wants our praise. Our thanks and adoration to Him for, for giving us this life for everything He has supplied. Even down to His Son dying on the cross for us. Because without that, Without what we do here in remembrance, what hope do we have? Any? I mean, I mean, you look at those words. Let's go continue through. The next one. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Starting with verse 56, it says, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. So what's the sting of death? We die. We know the pain in that. Those who are left behind, we know the pain in that. It says, And the power of sin is the law. What does the law say we get for our sin? Romans 6.23, death. We get death for our sin. 
But the grace of God we get. And he goes on here to say, the sting of, of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, thank God for what we said for Jesus. That He died for us. Go over a couple pages. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 14. 2 Corinthians 2.14 reads, But thanks be to God who always leads us in a triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of Him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the smell of death, to others the fragrance of life. And who is equal to such a task? Unlike so many, we do not peddle the Word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity like men sent from God. Catch those words? Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession. Who leads us where? Where does God lead you? Everywhere? How many of you does God lead every step of your life? How many of you do you take the lead sometimes and let Him carry on the time? We need to be thankful that God leads us and then we have to allow God to lead us so that we can be the fragrance to the people who we come in contact with because of Christ. What's the fragrance? God's Word. So that we can give God's Word to the people we come in contact with in this life. Thank God that He leads us and gives us the words to say. How many of you ask God to fill your heart? To, to, to give you the words? We're talking to Sunday school this morning. I know Melody said, man, before I go into a meeting, I'll, I'll even sometimes say, hey, i got to go to the bathroom just so I can get off by myself and pray before I go to a meeting that God gives me the words and the wisdom to know what to say and do in this meeting. Whatever that meeting's about. How many of you do that? Somebody says something to you and you take a second to say, okay, God, give me the words. Or how many of you just flail on in? Can't tell you how many times I've said something and I'm like, why didn't I just wait? You ever say those words? You know, those words that tend to maybe cut right to the quick. How many of you were able to take those words back? Once they come out of here, what? Free reign, isn't it? Whatever ears pick it up, hear it, and there you are. But we got to be thankful that God leads us through this life. And the only way to be thankful that God leads you through this life is to allow God to The is assuming something here that we're being thankful that He's leading us, that we're not allowing Him to lead. Okay, Paul says it. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. It is no longer me. It's Jesus. And if Jesus lives in me, He has to lead, right? Because I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. We have to understand that. That's how we're thankful every day that God is leading. By being His not ours. I didn't walk an aisle and God accepted me. I walked an aisle and I accepted God. You're part of me. I take control of this because I've messed it up to that point that it was just beyond. And some people have a hard time with that. They, how can a God accept this? You know why we have a hard time with that? Because we have a hard time understanding God is love. We try to assign worldly thoughts of love to God. Who has an infinite amount of love. Understand, our love is finite, isn't it? You may love me up until the point that I let you down. 
Internet love is a little weak. In this life, we, we, we see it all the time where people come and, and get together and, and they get married. So death goes apart and then what happens? You want, you want to know, you want to hear a scary statistic? It is more likely today for Christians to get divorced than non-Christians. It used to be like that. But it is today. Why? We don't understand God's love. We don't understand what love is we take the world's meaning of love, and love is what? Disposable. Isn't it? Not according to God's Word. Not if He's leading our life. Not if we're walking in His steps, then it's not. Then when we get together, it's together. Thick and thin. Good and bad. For rich or for poor. Those words that we say. You need to look at those. There's next one. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Second Corinthians chapter nine, beginning with verse thirteen. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. What is His indescribable gift? It's in that scripture there. What is His indescribable gift? You can say God's Son. Read, on, read down a little farther. Grace. Grace. His insurpassable <coughs> grace. What is God's grace? We're to be thankful for it. It tells us that be thankful to God for His indescribable gift. His indescribable gift is His grace. What is His grace? Say it out loud. We're forgiven. How many of you here are sinners? Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's us. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is grace, is eternal life. Is grace. How many of you are thankful for that grace? How many of you thank Him for that in the last 24 hours? I mean, it's important. We have to give thanks for these things that we're reading about here because this is what it's all about. It, this life doesn't matter without this. Anybody can live a life here on earth. But without this, what do they have? Nothing. Without this, without God, without His grace, without giving thanks, without Jesus, without all these things we're talking about, it's just a life. 1 Corinthians 13 says it's just a clanging gong. We make a noise for a while while we're here, and then when we're gone, what? Nothing. But with God, with Christ, with His leading, with His guiding, with His grace, we can live this life, and when we're gone, what? Everything. Eternity. And you might even leave a lasting legacy here that people can see and follow and be a part of. Everything. So be thankful to God for His indescribable gift, His grace. I think Jesus is an indescribable gift. But when you look at it, isn't Jesus part of that grace? Because of this gift, we get eternal life, God's grace. I mean, put it all together. Okay, we got so much to be thankful for. Even in this downturned economy, even when there's wars going on and earthquakes all over the world and, and volcanoes erupting and things going bad and fires and shootings in schools and 
You can just watch the news and see all the bad stuff. And read this and see some of the good stuff. His indescribable gift to me. The God of the universe, the God who created everything from nothing, gave me a gift. What I don't deserve, what I deserve is death. Eternal death. Spiritual death. That's what I deserve for my sin. But because of His love, that love that we don't comprehend fully, that love that is beyond us, because of that, He gives us this indescribable gift of eternal life. And what do I have to do for that? His son had to die for me. I have to accept it and live. I have to live the life God has planned for me to live through His leadership in my life. Not too hard, is it? I have to live according to this. To do His will and His bidding in this life. That's all I have to do. Something else that uh, He tells us, uh, one of my favorite verses. It's in, it's in five different books. You can find this. My favorite part is in Philippians chapter 1. Paul writes, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now we have to be thankful for every person sitting in these seats. And it's not I'm thankful for them on Sunday. It says I give, I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I continue to remember you. I pray for you every time I pray. That's what he's saying. Because of your partnership in the gospel. Puts a, little, puts a little emphasis there. Because of your partnership with the gospel. Because you're living the life we've been talking about. The life of thanks. The life of letting God lead. The life of knowing His love. The life of accepting Christ. The life of having His grace. Because you're living that life. Because of your partnership with me in that, I give thanks. This is it. That, that partnership was from the first day until now. Being confident of this. Here's the big part. That God who began, that He, God, who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Jesus Christ. He'll carry it on to completion until when? What is the day of Jesus Christ? His return. So, God is going to complete this work in you if you allow Him, if you allow Him to lead, if you allow Him to love you, if you allow Him to give you the grace, if you allow Him to do all these things we're talking about, He'll complete it. He'll do it until the day that Jesus returns, which is when? The scripture says, no man knows the day nor the hour, not even Christ Himself. Only when God says go. So what does that mean? Put all this together, what does that mean? We have to be what? Ready. Ready. How many of you are thankful that God gives you an opportunity to be ready? I look back at my life and I think, man, what if He came? I'm going to give you a date. What if He came? What if He came February 12, 1973? I'm giving you that date because there was something specific in my life that I won't share with you. But I know this: if He came on that day. I will spend eternity in hell. Trust me on this. That is like burned in my mind. I, I remember that day. I remember exactly what was happening and going on. I bet my family remembers. 
ask for forgiveness and it's gone. You're supposed to forgive yourself. You're supposed to forget it. God has forgotten it. God doesn't remember it, but I know it's there. It's in that file cabinet of my brain. And I know that in my brothers and sisters, their same file cabinet has it there. But what if he came back then? And I'm going to tell you something. I wasn't ready. And I thank God every day that He allows me the opportunity to get ready. My question today is this. Are you ready? You walk out this building today and you get in your vehicle and you pull up here on Parkway Way to Bayshore and you look left and you look right and everything looks good and you pull out and someone nails you. You're splattered on the road. You're done. There's no other chance. It's finished. Are you ready? You'd be, you'd be like the lady in a church when I was in Portsmouth who was sitting there listening to the sermon who just fell out of her pew on the floor. Boom. Dead. Are you ready? You go to bed tonight, you go to sleep, and you don't wake up in the morning. Are you ready? God has given you an opportunity to be thankful for everything He's given you. Are you thankful for the opportunity to be ready? Have you taken that opportunity to prepare yourself for eternity? We're not guaranteed a tomorrow. We're not guaranteed a next hour. Jesus could come back today or we could be killed by some, some odd means or we could just fall dead. Are you ready to meet God? Have you thanked Him for all the things He's done for you or have you given everything that needs to be given? Have you done those things that we're talking about here? Allowing Him to lead, allowing Him to love, allowing Him to give you that grace, allowing all that into your life. Have you done that that you're sitting here today and you can say without a doubt, if it ended this minute, I'm in heaven. I'll stand here before you right now and I'll tell you, I'm going. How many of you are going with me? And if you're sitting there and you have an inkling of a doubt, you have work to do in your life. You have got to get to that point where you can say, hey, come Lord Jesus, let's go. Enough of this frivolous stuff. Be done with this, let's, let's go. Let's start the party of praise. Do you feel that way? I am thankful that God has allowed me time to be ready for Him. And today I'm going to thank Him for the opportunity that we're going to have a Him of invitation that He's going to allow more of you, if it be your choice, to be ready for Him. As we sing the song, your focus is on you. As we sing the words, the words are for you. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Have you done everything necessary in this life? Have you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you given up control of this life and allowed God in to take control and be lead of this? Do you do His bidding and His will every day in your life? Do you share Christ on every opportunity you get when it comes to an opportunity that, that, that you give? Here, here, here's what I have for you. Not some gift in this life that's going to rot and go away, but a gift that will last for eternity. That's the unspeakable gift He gave us. Through His grace and mercy, we have that ability to have His gift that lasts in eternity. If you're sitting here this morning and you never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't thought about all these things to be thankful for, and today, give thanks. For tomorrow, the only thing that you might have are those things you thank Him for today. 
That's a stupid thought, isn't it? We've got to be thankful. If you're sitting here swearing you've already given your life to Christ, then that man be thankful that He has allowed you to choose Him. And then do something with that. Don't just sit there and say, yeah, that was good. That was... Man, start living that life. If you're not living it fully, start living it fully. Give it your all. Give it everything. Let Him lead and guide and direct you. Let Him love you to the point that you can't help but love others. No matter who they are. No matter where they are. God wants you completely today. As we stand and sing, if you have a decision to make, make your decision for Christ. with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Because we're getting this kingdom that we're talking about, because He has given us eternity, we should worship Him with acceptance and in awe. You just think of it this week. Be thankful for what He's given us. Be thankful that He's allowed us this this morning. We were able to come together and sing and praise and worship Him who has given us so much in His life that we live out of abundance. Live for Him this week. Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much for Your Word. We thank You so much that we can read and see and what we need to be thankful for. Father, there are so many things right in front of our eyes. There's so many things that You do every day from letting us rise up from sleep to eat to think, to breathe. But help us be thankful for the life you've given us and to show that thanks to living that life for you. Father, help us to serve you this week, to give you everything we have to your service. We pray this in your Son's name.